Hi, here you are. What you doing there, honey cakes? Oh, reading essay papers. No time for honey cakes. <laughs> you sure do smell good. That's mimeograph ink. <laughs> Got a little time to fool around with your hubby? Maybe later. What if I'm dead later? <laughs> I'll cry and grieve and call the insurance company. <laughs> I'm leaving home forever, and I just want to say goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Do you want to tell us where you're going? I'm going to live with my friend Stanley Vogel and his family. Oh, I see. Are the Vogels expecting you? Sure. They said they'd adopt me. Oh. Nice folks, the Vogels. You could do worse. You want to tell us why you're running away this time, Robert? Because no one here will play with me. Oh. Come here. Look, honey. The older people get, the busier they are. The busier they are, the less time they have to play. We still love you. I wonder what the Vogels are going to want to name you. Name. That's too bad. Because as soon as you become a Vogel, they can name you anything they want. That's the law. Maybe they'll let me keep Robert. I doubt it. I hear they like the name Stanley. <laughs> what are the other two kids' names? Cornelius and Lucretia. Well, I'll give it another week. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Dad. I almost had my own room there for about a minute and a half. <laughs> I just saved your young son from becoming a Vogel. I feel like that deserves a kiss and more. I heard that. You see? You happy now? They know we're in love. If they don't, they're stupid. <laughs> Come on over here and give it up. Charles. Are you trying to get away, huh? When are you two gonna grow up? As soon as I catch up. <laughs> gotcha. Picnics in the park. Kids in the car, Sunday's family day, get away. We're family, togetherness, and it's so good to know that we still count on us. Oh, 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 oh. we're family, we're made up of the lasting kind, so hard to find. We got us when the Family law number one. No phone calls during dinner. Lauren, get off the phone. Your food is getting cold. What about my new law? And it's against the law. <laughs> Mom, this is an emergency. It's an emergency. Well, you know, personally, Sharon, I think you look just great in short hair. But, you know, if Jeff doesn't like it, then... This is not an emergency. <laughs> if you want to see an emergency, I'll show you an emergency. Okay. It's an emergency. <laughs> Dad, why is everything such a big deal around here? It's no big deal. I just like to have dinner with my whole family, that's all. You want to see a big deal. I know. You'll show me a big deal. <laughs> I'll get it. I'll get it. New I'll family get... law number two. No one answers the phone during dinner. Hello? Except your mother. <laughs> just a sec. Junior, it's for you. Debbie Scott. Uh-huh. Where are you going? To answer the phone, Dad. It's school stuff. What about my new law? It's a good law, Dad, really. <laughs> Can he talk to me like that? Come on, you got us wrapped around your little finger, and you know it. I knew it. <laughs> That's just great. Debbie Scott's father had to cancel his career day speech. And Debbie is so hot, man. Yesterday in school, she set off the sprinkler system. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you? 
Because I'm in charge of career day. See, I invite kids' parents to come down and talk about their careers. You know, I actually earn extra credit for getting the phone numbers of every good-looking girl in my class. It's a pretty good deal, huh? What about the father with the ugly daughter? <laughs> Well, I have to draw the line somewhere. You know what they say, beauty is only skin deep, but ugly go right through the bone. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> now, Junior, when did all this start? It was about three weeks ago. Um, Beverly Contino's dad came down and talked about Chicago Symphony. I mean, he was terrific. Mm -hmm. And Arlene Beamish's dad, he was great. He's an airline pilot. So we've had an architect and a sports writer. See, we do it every Wednesday so all the doctors can make it. <laughs> can I come from his dad's door? I won't be doing it, little buddy. He only wants the pretty girl's fathers. And what am I, a collie? <laughs> well, you're pretty, but not to your brother. Hey, hey, you know Eddie Rankin's dad? Yeah, and another wears the hats with the antlers on them. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, he, he owns a radio station at Oak Park. He's a funny guy. Now, hey, everybody wants to be in radio. Well... It sounds as though there's no shortage of interesting careers. Can I have some more gray stuff with the brown things in it? It's wild rice, Robert. Not stuff with things in it. Junior, don't you think you should go have a little talk with your dad? Why? Well, you invited every other kid's dad, except your own, to come down and talk about his work. I think you hurt his feelings a little. Well, Mom, I, I just figured he'd never want to do it, that's all. You never even gave him a chance to decline. Now he probably feels like every other kid's dad has a more interesting job than he has. Way to go, Junior. You ought to feel lower than OK, I, I get the message. <laughs> Can I have some more of that yellow mushy stuff first? It's eggplant. Eggplant. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Hi. You know something? Whenever I see a road or a really nice highway, I always think of you. <laughs> hey, Dad, you know what I want to be when I grow up? What? I want to be a road and highway guy, just like you, Dad. Why is that? Because Junior hurt your feelings. Hey, 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 beat it, Robert. I gotta talk to Dad. We'll talk later. Okay, little buddy. Well, hi, Dad. Hi. What are you doing? Reading the paper? No, I'm giving myself an eye test. <laughs> Mind if I, uh, sit down? In the 16 and a half years that you've been eating my food, how many times have I said that you couldn't sit in the same room with me? Never. Okay, then have a seat. <laughs> um, Dad, how would you like to come down to my school and speak to my class on career day? Before? I don't know. I guess I've always thought of your work as more of a job than a career. Yeah, yeah, sort of. Look, if you want to, you can fill in for Debbie Scott's father the day after tomorrow. Are you sure you want me to? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. It's 3.30 on Wednesday. Hey. Yeah, Dad? Thanks for asking. All right. What are you yelling at me for? Charlie, it's Ferguson. He wants permission to tow away an ambulance. Well, tell him the regulation. Right. Regulation 226, paragraph 4. You are authorized to remove or relocate any illegally parked vehicle for the purpose of curb-to-curb -curb street cleaning. So what are you hollering at me for? The answer is yes, you can tow it. <laughs> oh, well, the same to you. <laughs> they all big shots are on the phone, but when you meet them face-to-face, -face, they're just like us. If Ferguson had a half a brain, he'd be dangerous. If anyone had half a brain, they'd be dangerous. <laughs> It's just an expression, Beaverman. Of what? It's just a very old, very famous expression, Beaver. Now leave it alone. Anyone else ever heard the expression, if Ferguson had half a brain, he'd be dangerous? What are you writing? 
I gotta go down to junior school and give a speech. Why, is the class being punished? <laughs> no, it's career day. Oh, well, just don't get them too excited. The last thing we need is competition from a bunch of snotty know-it-alls who just want to work here for the glamour and prestige. <laughs> you know, uh, I wish somebody got me excited about a career when I was a kid. It's not too late, Sandler. With a little training, you can become a speed bump. <laughs> Miguel's right. This is America. You could be anything you want to be. I want to be a nude photographer. <laughs> if I had a body like you, so would I. All right, listen up. I want to know who's in charge of Ferguson's road crew. Oh, uh, sir, that would be Ferguson. <laughs> Charlie, who told Ferguson he could tow away an ambulance? I cannot tell a lie, sir. It was Beaverman. I just told him the regulation. I was just kidding, Mr. Simpson. I did it. But we are authorized if it was parked illegally. With a patient lying in the back? <laughs> this is serious. Serious? We're talking lawsuit city here, Charlie. Hope you don't mind spending your next four months in court giving depositions. Sir Ferguson never mentioned there was a sick person in the back of the ambulance. Why do you guys listen to Ferguson anyway? Everyone knows he doesn't have both oars in the water. I didn't even know he had a boat. Well, just make sure you get some paperwork typed up before the uh, city attorneys come calling. Excuse me, sir, if I may, I have an... Sandler, whatever it is, no. <laughs> he likes me. Sandler, mm -hmm. if you could leap up and catch a frisbee in your mouth, I bet he'd take you to the park. <laughs> I'll tell you, Charlie, I don't know how you can do it. Get up in front of a room full of strangers and stand there and talk. I could never do it. I'd be too nervous. I once spoke to about 100 people when I worked for the post office. You weren't petrified? Oh, yeah. I drew up all over my good shoes. <laughs> tell you, look, instead of you guys making me nervous about this thing, why don't you help me write it? All right, okay. All right. What about, without the Department of Roads and Highways, Chicago would come to a standstill. That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Hey, 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 I got one. How about this? Um, we pave the roads and clear the snow and melt the ice to keep Chicago on the go. That's good, too. It has a little rhyme to yeah. it. Oh, oh, you want poems, huh? OK. Uh, How about, there once was a man from Nantucket. Oh, oh, oh. Speaking of the school, not a prison. Oh, you know, what you, should, you know what you should do? You should uh, tell some Ferguson stories. Remember that time he put up that sign on Rush Street, Hooker's Crossing? Do you remember that time? I remember that time. That, that was a funny time. And so a lot of people decide to become veterinarians so that they can play with puppies. Well, certainly that's a step in the right direction. And in my business, where you step is very important. <laughs> But as you can see, there's a lot more to it than that. And if you're willing to put in the years of study required, you'll find the veterinary profession to be fun, worthwhile, and lucrative work. Oh, we now get 50 smackaroos just to brush a dog's teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, and good luck to all of you. Thanks. Thanks again, Dr. Keppel, for your informative and entertaining talk. My pleasure. Anything for my Wendy. And a fine-looking specimen she is, your Wendy. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye, children. Good luck. Thanks again, doctor. Bye. Stay. <laughs> Knock him dead. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I, uh, clear the snow. Clear the snow? <laughs> I, uh, fix, fix, fix the roads. And, and I, I, I fix the roads. <sighs> I, there. Put, put, put up the signs. 
I, I put up the signs. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> Honey, you can't hide in this kitchen all night. I'm not hiding, I'm squeezing. Whenever you spend an hour and a half making juice, you're hiding. So I'm, I'm playing hide and squeeze. <laughs> Look, honey, I know how badly you feel about what happened today with your speech, but don't take it out on that harmless fruit. Wouldn't you like to talk about it with someone who loves you? There's nothing to talk about. You've been really hard on yourself. No, no father wants to fail in front of his son. Hey, Junior, come in here. I want to talk to you. Look, Dad. I think that you did the best you could, you know, considering you had no time to prepare or anything. You don't have to make excuses for me, Junior. I, I know I embarrassed you. Mom, Dad, we have to get Robert to a psychiatrist right away. <laughs> and the reason? I walked into my room and caught him putting on my pantyhose. <laughs> I'll be good. Please don't take me to a scientist. Why'd you do it, Robert? Why? Well, I could never figure out how Lauren could fit those long legs into these teeny things. It's like man to man talk to me, Charlie. Come on over here, little buddy. Robert, it's not normal for a man to be putting on ladies' underwear. Uh -huh. We gotta nip this thing right in the bud. We can't let this become a habit. See, what I'm trying to say, son, is that there are some men who don't like their own underwear. Charlie. No, what I'm trying to say is... I shouldn't do it again, right? That's right. You got it. I still think you can use some professional help. You would. Mom, if anybody needs professional help... I go and give your dad a hug and tell him you love him. Mom, he doesn't like the hug. He doesn't have to like it. Dad? What are you doing, Junior? Well, Mom told me to give you a hug and say that I love you. Yeah, well, well tell her I love you, too. <laughs> I'm sorry I, I choked up on you. Leave it alone, Charlie. You know, if I had it to do over again, I'd go about it in a different way. That's it. Maybe I should go back down there. Junior, I want you to tell your teacher I'm coming back down to that school at 2 o'clock tomorrow. No, no, no. Don't try to talk me out of this. Listen, Dad, if you're doing this for me, you don't have to. Oh. I'm not doing this for you, Junior. I'm doing this for myself. And it's too bad you're going to miss it, because I'm going to kill him. Hey, either one of you two want some orange juice? <laughs> Yesterday. Went so well, I gotta go back down there today. Details, Charlie, details. Well, there's nothing to say. I went home, I put my lucky tie on, got in the car, put some nice music on, yeah. nice ride down there, found a place right in front of the park. I went in, gave my speech, got back in the car, and drove home. Wait a minute, Charlie, the speech, what about the speech? Well, it, it, it was a little shorter than I expected. <laughs> you blew it, right? Well, I, I was doing okay and, until I had to talk. <laughs> and I looked out there and all those kids' faces and I became Marcel Marceau. You don't sound like Marcel Marceau. <laughs> hey, Charlie, I always heard the best way to make a speech is to pretend that you're talking to just one person. And then after a couple of sentences, well, the whole crowd disappears and you're just talking to that one person. Good idea. If it gets any windier out there, I'm gonna look like Don King. How'd you make out with that ambulance business? No sweat. The damage to the ambulance was minimal. We can do the body work ourselves. Well, now all we gotta worry about is the guy who was in the back. Now, he's not gonna be a problem. He won't? I don't think so. He died. <laughs> there goes my job. Oh, Charlie, Charlie, relax. So the ambulance driver finally told the cops the guy in the back was already dead when Ferguson told that vehicle away. 
That's why those idiot drivers stopped and went into a pizza joint. Well, why would those guys want to do something like that? Where else would you get pizza? <laughs> Hello, Joyce. Let me speak to Simpson. Now all I gotta worry about is my speech. Hello, Mr. Simpson. This is Charlie. We don't have to worry about the guy who was in the ambulance. He died. <laughs> oh? Hello, oh, Mr. Simpson? <laughs> well, my job may be not quite as glamorous as other professions. I still take just as much pride in my work as, as would a doctor, scientist, or an attorney. And besides, I was raised in this city, and I feel that my job gives me an opportunity to, to give something back to this great city of ours. Thank you very much. That was just wonderful. Are there any questions for Mr. Richmond Hans? Yes, uh, Timothy. Yeah, what do you make a year? <laughs> well, let's just say uh, it's very unlikely that you'll get rich working for the city, but I do manage to have my security, and my family's doing okay. You all wearing shoes, aren't you, Junior? <laughs> Jeffrey? Uh, yeah, Mr. Richmond. If the Department of Roads and Highways is such a great job, would you want your son to follow in your footsteps? It's a good question. Well, my father always wanted me to do better than he did. And I have. He was a laborer, and I'm already an assistant supervisor. Likewise, I want my son to do better than I have. I like to see him get a better education, better job, better standard of living. In fact, <clears throat> Even if I were the president of the United States, I'd still want my son to have a better job than me. I can't imagine what job that would be, except maybe judge on dance fever. <laughs> uh, I'd also like to say that my reason for coming back down here today was not just to show you that I could come down here and speak to you without choking, but also to show you that it isn't a tragedy to fail, like I did yesterday. And very often, failure can lead to success, like today. And once again, in conclusion, I want to thank you for your attentiveness and your graciousness in having permitted me to come back and see you again today. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Up to the front, we've got test papers back from yesterday. Come and get them. You were great. I'm so proud of you. Boy, I'm sure glad to see you. What a pleasant surprise. Yeah. You look so comfortable up there. How'd you do it? Well, Jim told me to focus on a familiar face, and I looked out, and there you were. If I hadn't seen you, I'd have been talking to Abe Lincoln. <laughs> yeah, but still, it must have been difficult for you. No, no. I'd say that getting in our bathroom in the morning is difficult. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> I know, and so does Junior. I mean, he's learned a lot about character from you. Your fine dad, Charlie Richmond. Not, not here, not here. Calm down. Dad. Yes, Junior. I just want to say you were so terrific. I mean it. And well, I know you don't like this, but not here. 